Hiya everybody, thanks for coming last night, hope you all got home quite quickly, it was a horrible night last night wasn't it, awful weather. I'm just going to do this, um, try and do it as quick as possible for you, I know you're busy. Now this was originally, I think it's a 48 pan, half pan set and it's Cotman which is this range so I do fill them up some of the with some of these now this is student quality i think um it's pretty decent good decent paint um not one of the most expensive but and not one of the brightest and all this but i, I you know i think it's value for money it's really good stuff and you do get very good colors now these are a mixture the glossy ones like this one definitely maybe that one as well are Sennelier and they don't really set they're hard to transport actually because they can as you can say go everywhere and they don't really harden like those ones Sennelier are these ones and the reason they don't set is because one of the binders in them is honey but they have got beautiful greens which is what I like um, more expensive but not the most expensive HWC Holbein watercolours quite expensive and these two I think are my most expensive Winsor & Newton Professional and then Winsor & Newton Artist watercolours and I've started using these as well these are by Jackson, Jackson's own and they're really really good really good um, professional quality uh, watercolours I like the bigger tube as well very good, really recommend. So that's what's in here, it's a mix of everything. So I, what I was going to do was compare all these ones which are better quality and this is your very cheap. I got this when I was on holiday once and forgot my paints, done that a couple of times and went out and got this. So it wasn't great but it did the job. So I'm going to do a few colour mixes with this and then compare and I'll get going. I'm going to start with the pinks because that's what we had trouble last night with. Now there isn't really a comparative pink to Joanne's pink. Joanne your pink was really fluorescent. Um, I do advise a lot of people had uh, dry pans. Spray them with water because sometimes actually you see the colour better. You see what your colour actually is when you spray it. Also get it ready f to work with. It's a nice red. That's just a basic alizarin crimson. Usually most reds are in sets like this. How to make it more pinky. Like the petal last night. Of yellow, a bit of white. I put white in this because most people had white in their sets last night. I do have white watercolour in that set. Most of the time I would put white gouache in there. Just a little bit more opaque. So that would knock it back. That makes it look like a peach. Now I'm not sure how a purple would work here, whether there'd be any good. Try it with a, to get into a purple. It's a fairly decent purple. How does the light blue go? A bit of green on that blue, take it off. That's a mucky purple. That would be good for something. Be good for one of the darker petals. It's 
Do a straight pink. Pink easy, I'm sure everybody knows how to mix pink. There you go. Dark red. I need to do the dark red without just putting black on it. Try it with a bit of blue. Problem with cheap sets like this, when you do try and darken your colours with another colour, you can just make it into a more mud muddy. There you go. That was a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown in the red. Darker red. This colour here is quite neglected. But it's so useful. Yellow ochre. And there's another one in, in bigger sets. You'll have something that looks just as unappetising, really. This one here. Which is raw umber. And then you usually have a burnt umber. Dark brown. But burnt, raw umber and yellow ochre are really good for mixing especially with greens so I'll just show you this green I don't know how it's going to come up on the screen but it's really really bright um, if you would describe it you just say emerald green straight out of the tin emerald green but the problem with that green is that you would not see that in real life it's not a natural green. First temptation, I suppose, and would be to just go straight to the yellow. Nice spring green. But even that is very, very bright. You know, you have a really bright, bright field in summer. Extremely bright. Sometimes on a painting, you're best just doing the yellow. I mean, that's a nice spring green. That does still have a little bit of that green in it. that's a nice lemony yellow it depends on your yellow if you have if you look at these yellows so that's a Naples lemon that is probably a Gambogee yellow Quinacridone yellow this is a type of yellow as well um, and I can't remember what this one is called but they're all very very different your lemon yellow if you're gonna do landscapes here I love ye lemon yellows for that this this color is brilliant for autumn autumn leaves so these greens are lovely nice spring greens but there's so many Gr green is the biggest variation in the color spectrum there are more variations of greens than any other colour. So how to make them. Yellow ochre. So that was yellow, green, and a light blue. Have you ever thought of putting 
little drop of red in your green. Give you a nice... Now you would have thought between the two of them, maybe that the dark brown, the dark blue, sorry, would have brought out a much darker green than that. It's quite weak. But no, it's a slightly darker one. But let's put a little bit of red in with the blue and the green. more green it's too watery there we go it's a very gray green you will have noticed I haven't used any black yet now you can put black in and for some things you probably do need it when you've got a a shadow that is so so dark but really when you're mixing colors and you're looking at paintings your your best blacks have got another color in them i'm not saying don't ever use black but sometimes say you're over you're doing a painting and most of it is green in the landscape then maybe if you had a black that you needed to put in and you tinted it with a blue, you'd have a very dark black that would harmonize with the other colors because it had a blue tint underneath. See, look at that, that's even darker because of the blue in it. Let's have a look and see what would happen if you put a red in it. A bit of red. Darker still. Mm. That was just red, that was blue, red and blue. So black is very useful, but um, say it's the same sort of theory as putting a green straight out on your picture, straight out of here. Black is the same, mix it with another color and you get a, a, a more harmonious black. So a little bit of brown. This is good for mixing with greens. How to knock a bright green back. Put a bit of brown in. It's a nice green. more of an olivey green the reason you put the yellow in sort of deepens the color so that's quite a decent variation you got an, a 
okay couple of purples lovely greens nice pink some good blacks and there are so many more greens that you can mix from that colour mixing is one of the most important things that you can do I would just turn to the back of your sketchbook and um, keep going just have a go now I'm only going to have a quick go because I really wanted to do with the other set more because you won't have many of these other colours but what I did want to show you was the raw umber because I know a few of you had that and that is good for knocking a green back so on this set I think this is one of the this is one of the original greens probably one of the most brightest and unnatural that's yeah very unnatural looking so this is your raw umber. That's nice. Raw umber's a bit. It's a bit of a strange colour. It's a bit of a non colour. But then when you mix it with things, it can be so useful. Really can. Violet is another one. Obviously there was no violet in that other set. Too much. I need to mix it on the palette here. Got twigs and everything in this because I was out on Saturday. Violet. A lovely dark green. A bit similar to that. There really isn't any um, order to mix in. If you have something like um, a pink you want to make or a purple you want to make, just have a go with every type of blue and every type of red. There's no rules or order. See, that's very blue, blue. Why would you make that? That could be a green. What type of blue is that? That looks like a Prussian blue. You think of a Christmas tree. It's not far off a Christmas tree green. So it would be good to mix. too bright so what would you do take it down with maybe this darken it so have a go I hope that's helped these little sets are great they're great because I mean 
the bigger sets are lovely with more choice but if you haven't learned to color mix and you get stuck and you don't know which colors on your set work with what with which other ones then you'll just keep going for the color in the pan and you'll never mix it with all of the others so have a go pick out a few pages out the back of your sketchbook at least two and mix your greens mix some purples mix some pinks pale blues light blues and just start putting other colors and see what happens with them and you'll start to that's how you learn your materials and how you get the best of them rather than just taking a colour straight out of the palette and putting it on. Make a mess. Have fun. Right, I'm going to show you how to finish these off if you want to. Remember I said about putting on a little bit of oil pastel? These will be harder to mix. This bit here is the. I was going to say hyacinth. What was it? A bit orangey, pinky. Notice how I'm holding the pastel not like a pen not like that mostly I think because if you hold it like that as well you're not dragging your hand across your page and you do have more control and you do have to push a little bit harder with things like oil pastels Now all I'm doing here is showing you what you could do if you put your pencils over the top. I'm not going to take a long time doing this, it's just to give you our ideas, an example. I know Joanne really liked 
using her Posca pen at the end to go over everything. And you can do that with pencil as well. These are lovely soft pencils. These are Derwent Graphite Graph Tint and Derwent. These ones are Derwent drawing pens. They're lovely and soft. Not really expensive either. So that just finishes it off a little bit. Gives you a more finished look. I know it's not um, completely shaded properly and coloured properly, but you you do that if you want to. You can get your photographs out and shade them because it will go over your watercolour really nicely and it'll give you a good practice at shading. I can get a bit addicted to this so I can stop because this video will take too long. <laughs> Um, I'll put a little bit of shadow underneath on the bars. a quick demo just to see what you could do with the quick sketches that you did last night to try and finish them off there we go I can't stop fiddling it was good fun though and I hope it um, hope it helped I'll see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.